for Aquarius. Happy holidays to you all. Um, I hope this is a joyful time for you all. I see a quest. I just keep hearing the word quest. I've been meditating on your sign and I, I just keep um, hearing quest. And it, it could be a quest of healing. You could be, oh, that's beautiful. You could be about to enter a new stage of your life. And I feel like it required a lot of healing. I hear a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom you have gained from what you've been through. I hear overcoming a very difficult or challenging time. Okay. So I, I hear back against the wall. You could have been in a situation where you felt like your back was against the wall. Um, I hear all odds could have been against you. It could have even, ooh, it could have even been someone you've known. It can be for the cross watcher where you could have been partnered with or known someone. It could be a family member who um, all odds were against them in a, in a verdict, like a case, a court case. I hear documents, documents or documentations, maybe um, there were some documents that you had to search for or someone in your circle had to search for in order for a verdict. So I hear prosecutors. And this this could have been a case that been long going. Because so I hear proceedings. Um, so this seems like a, a battle, like a court battle. I don't know if you are partnered with someone who is currently incarcerated, or if you you know of someone who is currently incarcerated. Because like the way I see it, this person, it seems like they still could be in jail. If they're not in jail anymore, then it looks like um, they could be out on bail. So maybe you could have been connected to someone who had to do time or someone who caught a very, very heavy case. It could have been a very heavy load on you. It could have caused you lots of stress. Um, maybe you're coming to the end of the verdict. And it's been like a healing time for you, trying to figure out how to get through this time, okay? So that's just for some of you. That just came out of nowhere. I hear deceitful acts. For others of you, you could have been healing from um, narcissistic abuse or an abusive ex. I hear very deceitful, deceiving, and they very controlling. Like this person, um, they try to control your finances. Like they try to control your finances. They they try to, um, I hear receipts. Maybe they try to hide receipts of spending, certain spendings that they, they would do. Money would be out of the account. Um, yeah, money would be out of the account. Um, and they tried to hide the receipts of spending. Maybe you could have been attached. I hear the word attachment. So you, I hear codependent. It could have been like a toxic connection that you could have been in. Um, where this person that you were attached to like were, was overspending. This could have even been like a child, like a child that was taking advantage of you. You could be the parent and you had a child that was very deceitful to you and they took advantage of you. Um, they probably lied to you, came to you for money about things and what they said that they were needing the money for, it wasn't, it wasn't true. So you, you have a child who could have deceived you. Then I see self-sabotage okay so this can be for you or your cross watcher always keep that in mind um you could have had a child who was very self-sabotaging like always got in trouble um you could have been trying to guide or lead this child in the right path but they always did things that would get them caught up in the system or get them caught in trouble 
you can be very concerned about this child right now. Um, Cause I hear on the run. So I don't know if they're on the run literally like from the law or if they moved out your house because there was so much tension in the home between you two. Um, but you were just trying to help, you know, but they don't see it that way. Maybe they felt like you were trying to control them when in actuality, you were truly just trying to lead them down the right path. If this is not <clears throat> a child, it can be someone that you were with who had very, very childish tendencies and they were very self-sabotaging. Okay. They would do things. I hear lie. They would self-sabotage this relationship. Um, Also friendship. I hear a friendship, like a friendship is on the line. You know, you, you were crossed. You were crossed by a friend who tried to backstab you. It could, this sounds messy. It could even seem like a friend who tried to betray you over a mate, you know? So I don't know if they were flirtatious with someone that you were connected to, someone that you love, someone that you were dating and your friend, you could have heard rumors that your friend tried to speak to this person behind your back or they could have sent flirtatious text messages, okay? Um, so however that energy fits for you. Yeah. And then this has to do with patience, okay? So let's look into what is patience. So this can be patience on your path. Maybe you're leaving you. And I did say that you're overcoming challenges. So I just felt like you could have had a, a very, very, yeah. You could have just had a very, very challenging time and you're waiting for balance to come back in your life. OK, I think it could be a little bit scary because I think things are finally starting to unfold. And um, this is like the unknown. You know, you're, you're stepping into the unknown or being that you walked away from troubling waters. I hear now you're in a crossroads. So. You could be in a stage where this new life is about to unravel for you, but it didn't as of yet. Like you see it happening or you could possibly feel something, but you don't know what it is. Like the unexpected and starting to make you nervous. It could even be a situation where you're trying to be patient because you could be waiting for more finances. It can also be, um, I hear independent worker. So some of you guys could be independent workers, or you could have took a chance on yourself and left your job and started a new company and you don't know how it's going to go. So you, you, I hear placement. So you, you just had a new placement and you're just waiting for things in your world to balance out. And it could be scary right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is beautiful. So completion, you just, completed a cycle. Okay. And now things are about to shoot forward for you. So I think this is what you're waiting for. Like you're waiting for this takeoff. You just completed a cycle. And I did say that it's like you're in the middle of a transition and, and you truly, you're hoping for the best, but you don't know what's to come from all that you've been through. Okay. Um, okay. Spirit just said to me, Whoever is going through this trying time to remain hopeful, like this too shall pass. You could be at um, a crossroads right now in your life, all right? Where you could have closed out chapters. You could have walked away from people who could have been, they could have been trifling. <laughs> they could have been trifling. They could have been trifling. How about that? And you're stepping away from a certain type of lifestyle, um, a way of living, a way of thinking. And you're moving into a new dimension, a new domain, like new territory. This can even be like a physical move um, that you're going into and you're, you're truly afraid. Oops. So this is fertility. This could be literally someone who is pregnant, okay? So you could you could have just found out that you're pregnant and that could be scary. And, and you just want to make sure 
that things are balanced out before this baby comes. You're, you're hopeful and you um, are stepping into the unknown. Maybe you're a first time parent. OK, so if you're not pregnant, fertility can also mean giving birth to your dreams. Yeah. So intuition and, and waiting game. Two things, right? Waiting. If you are pregnant, of course you're waiting, right? You got you got nine months. So you could be you could be waiting. If you're not waiting for the birth of a child, you could be waiting to give birth to your dreams. And it could be making you nervous. You could literally be afraid of what's what's to come only because of what's behind you. You know, um, so you can be going to readers. You could be looking on YouTube at different readings to see how things are going to unfold. And it can be scary when you walk away from a way of living and the next door hasn't opened as of yet. It's like you're you're in this in between and it's it, it could be scary. So a matter of fact. Whoever's going through this, I'm going to help you out right now. <laughs> While you're waiting for your dreams to unfold and, and for you to give birth to this new life that you are transitioning into, because this looks like a transition to me, leaving the old behind, you know, um, you could have even had self-sabotaging ways where you would put other people before you, you would help other people out. Um, and it, and even if it just dis caused disruption in your life, and even if it caused disruption in your finances, maybe self-sabotage is you allowing yourself to put other people before you. Maybe you're putting an end to this because you see that it's not getting you nowhere. And now you're finally taking a chance on yourself and giving birth to your dreams instead of helping. I mean, helping is beautiful, but maybe you were over giving over giving to the point where it could have left you depleted and you exhausted, exhausted financially and physically. And now you are starting to give birth to your dreams. Um, so basically I have this new method that I've been, I've been using and actually it's been very, very successful. So I will pass it on to you. I have this new shifting tool that I've been using for myself. Like, um, this waiting energy can cause a lot of anxiety when you truly don't know how things are going to unfold, right? So the first beautiful thing that I always say to myself is, well, what is in your control? The only thing that is in my control is me and this present time that I have. The thing is, time is precious and it goes by so, so fast. I feel that some of us take time for granted because if you're in in your house and sometimes if you're like looking through your cell phone or if you're looking through social media or if you're going from app to app in your phone and you look up and you're like, oh, my goodness, look how late it is. That's a lot of time that could have been put into something else that you have to get done. So my whole thing is um, I I have this shifting approach that I use and it's productive shifting. So. When I start to feel anxious about something that I'm waiting on or something that I'm trying to give birth to, um, you know, in a, in a manifesting way, <laughs> the beautiful thing is I will take out my paper and I will write down all the things that I need to do right now that is in my control. And when I tell you that list be so long <laughs> and, it, and, you know, don't take for granted the simple things that need to get done, like um, doing an extra load of laundry or reorganizing your closet or um, getting in some time. Like like for me, I love I love to meditate by the water um, and get into nature. So it's it's basically like me putting down list by list every single thing that I need to do. Even, you know, sometimes it can do with preparations for work or even going over my account to check out my spending um, so I can reevaluate myself and, and how I'm spending, how I'm saving. You know, there's always an area in your life that needs improvement. So I love to use the shifting 
approach and it helps me um, catch up on so many other things that I that I truly need to do. Um, you know, so just just think about it. You know, you can consider using that method and, and it's really effective. And it actually it actually like boosts my confidence because it's when I cross things off the list, it, it makes me feel like I'm getting so many things done. And I'll be like, ooh, you know, so it, it makes me feel good. And I always tell people like the, the power of a pen, like writing things down and seeing it. And it's also beautiful because it gets it, it gets it off of your head, which can which can drive you crazy. Because if you keep saying in your head, it's like you're reminding, you're, you're trying to remind yourself like, oh, I got to remember, you know, to get paper towel and Lysol. <laughs> You'll keep repeating it in your head. So if you just write those things down and it, you create it into a list of, of all the things that you need to do. Um, yeah. So just, just think about that. Things that you wished you always you know, you you wish you could do, but you kind of procrastinate on. Things like that should be on the list. Right. Yep. So once again, patience and planning. So th there's something, ooh, I hear a fork in the road. There's something that you are waiting. Okay, well, here it goes. <laughs> wish fulfillment. Patience and waiting. There is something like wish fulfillment, something that you... Are building and I'm, let me see if it's in the material world. Let me see if it's in with love. What is this? If they're trying to give birth to spirit. What is this? Oh, okay. So this is material harvest. So this is your material world. Your your patience and your planning. So this has to do with like money. Um, I heard I heard building finances up. So maybe you could have went through a time and I mean, hey, this is the holidays. OK, <laughs> this is the holiday. OK, <laughs> so if you spent too much cash. And you're you're waiting <clears throat> for your finances. Yep. You're waiting for balance in your finances. So exactly. what. Ooh. So when I see when I see balance in finances and then I see shadow side to me, that seems like someone who could have done some overspending. And I I did say that on my list, like looking over my finances. I, I want to teach you all another beautiful trick of mine. Um, that is, is the best thing I could have done for myself. I took out a savings account and um, I took out a savings account that is not associated with my bank where my checking is. OK, I don't have a I do not have a card for my savings account at all. And and it's like two towns away. So it's it's clearly like a 30 minute drive um, away from me. And I, I purposely did that so that I wouldn't have easy access to it. And it's not like a well-known bank that is everywhere. I think Chase Bank is is freaking everywhere. Um. So I made sure to get a savings account with a bank that's far and it's it's not well known. So I won't have it won't be easily accessible to me. And what I did is I set up with my checking account like a wire transfer so that it automatically takes money and puts it into my savings. And I, I truly don't even see it. So for any of you who are having issues, it's hard for you to save. It's hard for you to um to gain to gain money. That's something that you can probably utilize to help you build up a, a healthy, secure savings account. OK, here we go. Let's go to love. Right. So this looks like a spiritual union. This looks like a meeting of the minds. Let's see what's going on with this with this love situation, because this seems like something that's about to charge forward. Ooh. I hear rekindling. So you you could have rekindled with somebody. You could have rekindled with an ex, somebody from your past. And if you're trapped in fear right now, it could be the beginning stages. Maybe you just reunited with someone from your past. If you didn't reunite with somebody, and I only said that because I heard rekindle. If you didn't rekindle with somebody, you could have just met a new mate. 
and you want things to um, go forward because I see chemistry here. This looks like two people. You see the minds, it's like meeting of the mind. So I feel like you guys have a true good connection. Maybe you guys have a lot of things in common. There might be a certain way that this person thinks or certain values that this person has, and you feel the connection where your your values resonates or aligns with theirs, and you're just truly hopeful that this thing, this thing, Lord, <clears throat> this relationship or situationship, I don't know. If you're afraid if it's going to take off to me, I say it's a situationship, you know? You could be trapped in fear wondering if it's going to take off. Will you guys work out? What's going to happen with us? You know, you know, all those mixy feelings when you're getting to know someone. Um, you're afraid of being vulnerable because of what happened in the past. You don't want it to repeat itself. So you just want to be sure. All those. The thing is that I have to say for you, if you are a person who, who is overcoming like a past challenge or you were with somebody who is deceitful, you are more prepared for this relationship right here than you know. Like you you definitely have gained all the tools and wisdom of how, how to go about picking the right mate for you, you know? Um, vulnerability is scary. Vulnerability is scary. But at the same time, it's like, you should have a clear description of what red flags are. So make sure, and and for, for all of you who have been trying to manifest a mate and now this person is in your life and you're wondering, is it them, is it them, will it be? Go back to that manifestation list that you have and see if this person fits the criteria, see if they align with what you asked for. Um, and don't lie to yourself. <laughs> Like be be very honest with yourself and have clear cut honest communication. Make sure when you meet in people, you asking the right questions, okay? Because you're you're getting to know somebody and you're you're getting to know um, their values. You know, are they respectful? Are they considerate? Are they consistent? How does their family? look at them or, you know, how do they speak about their, their mom or their, their dad? Do they have respect? Do they have, um, mannerisms? Do they, are they hardworking? Like those are, those are clear indications. You can see how do they act with challenges? You know, when, when adversity comes for this person, how do they act? Um, there's so many different questions that you can ask a person to see, what type of person they truly are, you know? Um, and try to have fun with it. Because once you start getting too paranoid, then you act paranoid. And once you start acting paranoid, then that, that hey, that can cause self-sabotage because you're so afraid and then your defense goes up and then you're suspicious. And then now you out of character, you out of pocket, weird stuff happens. So just make sure that you're checking your own self, okay? Make sure that you're emotionally balanced when you meet new people. When you see yourself, question yourself. Is this, is this my ego? Is this... <sighs> the mind can play tricks on you. Sometimes I, I use the word fillers. When you, when you are too afraid to ask people certain questions or you don't know how to talk or communicate with people, then you use fillers. Fillers can be imaginary. You know, so just just make sure you're paying attention to red flags. Make sure you're asking um, good questions. And always, always like I always do. I'm, I'm really, really big on energy. I'm so huge on energy. I'm big, 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 big. Um, so for me. Internally, I'm really big on my internal parts. <laughs> So for me, like even even if I go around somebody that I'm dating and if my heart tends to close up, like my, my chest will get tight. And that's a clear indication for me that I'm, I'm truly guarded. So like pay attention. Let me tell y'all, we always so big at wondering about other people and their behaviors. But sometimes we got to check our own shit. That's that's just so real. Sometimes you got to check your own self. OK, so make sure. 
because of what you went through in the past that you're not allowing it to affect something that could be great. Like check on you. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So back to that question, like ask yourself, is, is this my ego? Am I making a story up that I truly have no, no proof on, or, you know, is it fear? You know, nine times out of 10, if you were just with somebody who was a narcissist, it's, it's, it's still narcissist abuse that takes a while to heal. So just make sure, make sure you're, you know, checking in on yourself. <laughs> yeah. So here goes this deception and envy. I see deceitful X. See, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, is a deceitful X clouding your judgment on the next? Ooh. Like, is a deceitful X clouding your judgment about the next? Like, you don't know who to trust. Are you, are you overthinking? And when you go into a panic mode and you start to overthink, it's very important to like ground yourself. So this is why like solitude is so important and why we should get in tune with us and figure out who we are as individuals and figure out our triggers. It, it will be beautiful like to help us balance our own self. You know, a lot of times we're afraid we don't want anybody to, to meet. We don't want to meet somebody and have to deal with their baggage, but Sometimes we got our, our own baggage too. So just once again, I'm going to check on this deception and see what this is all about. But to me, I hear overanalyzing. I feel like you can possibly be playing out your fears and overanalyzing a situation. And that's another, that's a beautiful way also to, to see of how healed you truly are from this narcissistic abuse or from deception in the past. That's a good way to, to check on like where you are at internally with your healing, because if all these fearful thoughts start to pop back up in your mind, then it's just a clear indication that, damn, I guess I wasn't as healed as I thought, you know, then you can look on ways to, to get through to that, you know. So let's see. All right. See, this is the, like, I don't know what to, to take of this. <laughs> All right. I, I see this as something else. This can also be an ex that you could have walked away from. And they feel deceived that you're moving on, you know? Maybe they thought they had it like that with you. Maybe they thought that you were going to come back around. I feel like this person is lonely and left out in the cold. Um, whoever this ex is, they, I, oh, this is, this is getting juicy, honey. This is, this is turning into lifetime. <laughs> this is like about to be a, a soap opera or something. I see this different. So this is two ways. That's that's another way. It could be self-deception, but something just popped into me. So you left somebody behind, okay? I want to use 70%. 70% of you left somebody behind. Whoever you had to walk away from because they were too deceptive, they are pissed. <laughs> They're mad. Um. Not only that, they are stuck with somebody that they don't like because it's basically like whoever they got themselves involved with, it, the grass was not even greener. And then it looks like they barely even pay attention to this ex. They must have noticed that you withdrew your energy. Okay. So I feel like some of you guys did cord cutting. Some of you guys definitely cut some cords. Um, you you energetically cleansed yourself of an ex and they feel the loss of you and they feel deceived. Um, I hear emptiness and, and deep rooted sadness. Nostalgia. They keep replaying moments with you. And this is good and bad. 
they keep replaying like um I hear I hear hurtful texts. There was a hurtful text that you could have probably sent this person. Like, I'm tired of your ass. I'm done with you. <laughs> you probably said something like that and then truly meant it. And I think this person's ego was shot to shit. Like, I think you shot their ego down terribly. Because not only did you, you probably would say things like that to them, but then always go back. I feel like this ex created a rapport with you where they felt like, yeah, go ahead, just get mad. You're just going to come back. It could have been a situation like that where you would leave them, but you always would come back. You could, I hear eight years, you could have been in a relationship with this person for eight years and you finally like pulled the plug. And I hear remorseful. I hear they're very remorseful. They're very regretful. I hear sleepless nights. And then I hear deepening sadness and reject rejection. So they feel rejected by you. Um, and I see where they like try to snap out of it. So it could be a situation where they can be like sitting in their bed, laying down and they can be reflecting on you, like in, in real deep, deep thoughts, just thinking about you, thinking about the times they had with you, thinking about, oh, I heard how they wish things would have last or what things could have been like if they would have been with you rather than where they are instead. Um, and then, yeah, I, I definitely see another person around them. So this was a third party situation and you couldn't take being in this situation anymore. Um, they still, I still see someone being around them. It could either be like a new suitor that's around them. Um, with narcissists, you would say like they have new supply. You know, if not, it could just be someone that they could have had like been on and off with so I hear a switch up. Maybe they would go back and forth between you and the person to switch up. When that person would piss them off, then they would, you know, try to sweet talk you and get you back. And then when you would piss them off, then the, they would grab the other person. And it, it's like they they no longer have that pillow, you know. Um, and I hear somebody saying like, you, I, I guess you truly don't never know a good thing until it's gone. Like I hear them saying this to themselves. Um, I hear a song, maybe there is a significant song that you two share that they listen to and remembrance of you or what you guys had and they're devastated. They would never show you this, you know, because I just, I just seen like, if they were to see you, I just seen a vision of this. If they were to see you in public, they would, um, even if they had like a sad face, like they would purposely try to act like they, they're good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, they, they don't, they don't want anybody to know that you leaving them has truly left a heavy, heavy dampening on their heart, you know, um, they never, they never truly appreciated your, your, your presence. And they could have, they could have, they could have appreciated your presence, but they didn't value it. Does that make sense? They didn't value it and they, and they damn sure ain't respect it. So I hear doomed, like they feel doomed. They feel like, um, They feel like this is truly um, a missed opportunity with you, you know, but I don't see them even trying to come back. So I feel like it's, this is a clear indication. Um, and you could be out celebrating. You can be out living your best life. You probably couldn't wait to get over this person. And now you finally are. And now you turned up like you probably living your best life or trying to. You know, like trying to, because it looks like you got a little situation over here. But anyway, um, 
So you're, you could be at a rest right now, or you could have been at a standstill trying to overcome this. I hear, I keep hearing is you could have literally like been physically or verbally abused by this person. Okay. I'm not, I'm not really, I just keep, or they just could have, they could have scorned you with narcissistic abuse. If it wasn't, it could have been a physical or a verbal abuse. And now things are shooting forward in your life. So if you're at a very, very stagnant time, just know that victory and success is coming your way. Okay. Let me see. Let me see something real quick. Yeah. Like stand your ground. Like don't give up. Do not give up. Stand your grounds. Keep, still keep hope alive. Still keep love alive. Um, whatever, whatever you're waiting on, whatever you're waiting for, for. Yeah, this is so beautiful, Aquarius is. I know you're a little scared, but stand in your truth. You know, this is a moment of truth. You cutting through a lot of bullshit. You you really are truly on your way. You know, even if you may get sad sometimes and not um. You know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> For some of you, you're too hard on yourself. You're too, too hard on yourself. Okay. So whenever you get this video or whenever you see this video, you can even write it in the comments because this will be cool and productive and helpful. What is something that you have learned in 2019? And it can be in career, finances are in love, you know, and, and tell me something that you're so proud of within yourself. Like, what are you proud of? Tell me things that, tell me about something that you, you were able to su successfully achieve or successfully overcome or, you know, acknowledge the growth that you have been through after all you, you done been through. Cause this seems like a lot for some of you. Okay. So let's let's start with that. <clears throat> yeah. See? So for some of you, I don't know if you're here or if you this could have been in, in the past. Let me feel it. For some of you, I just heard current. Some of you, this is currently, you're going through a, a transformation. This transformation is spiritual. I think some of you guys are still continuing on with this uh, spiritual transformation. Like, you know, you're, you're unlearning behaviors, learning certain things about yourself. Revelations are made about certain people and things that you need to, to cut away from. Coming full circle with with your soul's truth, coming full circle with the truth of the people around you. That ain't no good. You ain't no good, baby. So you're 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 transforming this. You know, it's basically like you're transmuting this energy. Okay. So this could, man, if you're going through a spiritual transformation, it it is like it could feel like suffering. I don't know if I said this in the last video last month, but um, if you are still in this energy of going through a spiritual transformation, I want you to research the uh, symptoms of it, awakening, because, you know, it feels like this. It, it damn sure feels like this. But when you overcome it, and you will, this too shall pass, right? When you do fully get over onto the other side, there's hope, there's light, there's love. Okay. Um, what else? <laughs> and there's a new beginning. So for some of you, you could be right here. I hear at the door. You could be at the front door of this, like one more step, like you're there. So remain hopeful. You got this. Okay. I hope this video resonated. I'm sending you love and light Aquarius.